Hello and welcome back to the Manhattan Build Project. I am Old Man Clemens. If you haven't seen the prequel or episode one of the Build series, go and check that out, hit that subscribe button, and then head back over here. Bear with me as this episode is gonna be more of a show and tell than a see and watch, as I only have photographs for this portion of the build. Starting with the next episode, we'll be back to video. Thanks guys. Now that the 1947 Chevrolet Fleetline Aero Sedan is back home, I went about the large task of going through all the boxes and boxes of parts to inventory what I have. The next thing I did was put the frame on jack stands and hit up some friends to help me put the body on the chassis. The previous owner had put on a Mustang 2 front subframe kit. I believe it is a chassis engineering kit and was designed for coil springs. I'm doing airbag suspension on the car and so I knew I would have to make modifications to the setup. My goal is to have the fleet line lay on the rocker panel so you can see in the photos I am using a piece of angle iron clamped to the rocker to base my measurements off of for the front suspension. I knew I needed an engine before too long and so I was searching Craigslist every day, as I always do. Should I go V8 or should I stay with an inline 6? That thought never actually crossed my mind. I always knew I would stick with a 6 as they have the right sound and soul for these cars. I found an engine for sale that was a fresh rebuild for a project that took a turn towards V8 up in northern Minnesota. It's a 250 cubic inch engine with a dual carb and split long tube header setup on it. I headed up to Nevis, near Leech Lake where I'd spent a week every summer of my youth to have a look at the engine and make a deal. The engine checked out and the owner Danton was a rad dude to hang with who had a bunch of classics sitting around his property including a blue and white 55 Nomad which I was drooling over. Around that time, I also purchased a rear axle out of an early 90s 4x4 S10 pickup truck. Right after I bought the 47, I ordered up some rims and tires. These showed up about 5 weeks later, and I had them mounted up right away. I'm using Wheel Vintiques artillery wheels in a 15x6 size, and Diamondback radio white wall tires in a 195 x size with a 2 quarter inch white wall. I'll be using some Baby Moon or Smoothie Center caps on them. It was also time to start collecting accessories for the car. If you know anything about these type of cars, you know that they are all about the accessories. I started by finding the accessory hood ornament at a local swap meet for a great price. I bought a banjo steering wheel core to have refinished down the line, as well as a complete regular steering wheel. He even had a steering column. I also picked up a couple of backup lights, one to use as is and one to have re -chrome. He also had a new in-box correct your GM tissue holder which are very popular with these vehicles and hard to find nowadays. Not only did I find one source for all of those parts, I also bought a Fulton 800 series visor in great shape as well as a few extra steering wheels. I'll restore one of those, hang a few on the wall, and sell a couple down the line. Hey, when the parts are right in front of you, it's best to snatch them up while you can. I got an extra complete grill for parts and an extra top bar. I found a clean pair of the correct size guide fog lights for a great price as well. Oh yeah, I also found a vintage glass swirl knob that matches my car. I had ordered a whole bunch of suspension components after I got the car up on jack stands and assembled the front suspension. I purchased a bolt-on bracket to convert a standard Mustang 2 shock tower to airbags. I didn't like the way it fit and it seemed sketchy how it bolted to the tower so I ended up cutting the spring cup and shock mount off the top of the tower to section in the bracket and weld it in place. I also raised the top of the shock tower an inch. Next up I cut the spring cup off the lower control arm so I had a clean surface to bolt the airbag to. I also switched over to a manual steering rack as the setup came with a power rack and I did not want power steering. I quickly realized the suspension did not have the range of motion I needed to lay on the rocker and so I got to work making modifications. I ended up cutting the ball joint cups out of the upper control arms and repositioning them to gain some clearance and increase the range of motion. I also shaved both sides of the cup where it was contacting the steering knuckle at both ends of the travel. I did this to the outboard side of the lower control arm cup as well. I used the angle iron that was clamped to the rocker panel to ensure that I had enough suspension travel to lay the car on the ground. My tires are 24 and 7 8 inch tall, let's call it 25 inches, and so I knew that the center of my spindle's kingpin would need to be at least 12.5 inches up from the rocker. After more consultations with Craig and his list, I found a transmission for sale an hour north of me. I had been doing research every day for weeks and settled on a Borg Warner T5 manual transmission out of an S10. This fit my needs for many reasons. They are easy to find, relatively cheap, and have a small footprint, and the shifter is in the middle of the transmission and so it will clear the bench seat in my fleet line. 
On my trip up to St. Cloud, I narrowly avoided a tornado and ate a couple of donuts. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Next up, I had to figure out how to connect the transmission to the engine. In my weeks of research, I think I had it figured out. The internet is a weird place, for many reasons, but one is that there's too much information out there. I would think I had it figured out, and then some new piece of information would pop up making me doubt what I thought I knew. In the end, I was able to use the bell housing that came with the engine, which is a 1968 Camaro big block bell housing, and mated the 1988 S10 T5 to it with the Davis Speed Equipment Spacer plate. The flywheel is native to the engine, which is actually a 1972 Camaro engine from an AC car, and I used a 1987 Astro van clutch disc and pressure plate to complete the Frankenstein setup. Yeah, things got weird and complicated and I can't believe I figured it all out. I'm also sure there's about a dozen other ways to piece it all together. After that fiasco, I got to work mounting the setup in the car. I chopped up the body to fit the transmission as I went and made the engine mounts out of some square stock. It was all pretty easy and went very smooth. I mounted the engine as low as I could and as far back as I could. I guess the race car builder in me is still alive and well. During that time, my airbags came in and I got those mounted to the shock tower and lower control arm up front. Put the artilleries on and check the travel. As you can see here, I have plenty. Okay, that's it for episode two of the Manhattan Build Project. Please subscribe so that you'll be notified when episode three drops. And that episode will start on the rear suspension and we'll be making further modifications so that the car can lay on the rocker panels. Thanks for watching. Crime Jews got me blanking like old days. Mm -hmm.